Hey guys, Nate here with the Volunteer Tech Vlog. Uh, in this video, I will be giving a live sound report for Sunday, March 22nd, 2015. So, here's the rundown of everything that went wrong, or uh, is, is, is uh, uh, at least worth noting in this vlog when I go back and look at it at some point in the future. iVGA Pro Signal was dropping out. So this is how we uh, communicate from our Pro Presenter 5 computer to the TriCaster. We have to use a network input and to do that we have to use a bit of software to install on the source PC that is becoming the uh, that is this that is the input source to the TriCaster and if we do it over the network we need to use this program called IVJ Pro and the signal is dropping out actually dropped out 11 times in the 8 a.m. service and five times in the 1045 service and um, talk more about that. Um, the floor monitor speaker is reportedly broken. I have not examined it. I just heard reports from the musicians that it broke. So to look into the, the wooden floor monitor speaker that is broken. Uh, In-ear monitors, uh, they make a horrible noise when there's low battery. Found that out today. Um, the SAC, Software Audio Console Remote, froze. So it froze and seemed to lose IP sync. And typically I go to the host and I know that the IP address is 10.0.0.24 so then I can go to SAC and just manually type that in. Could not do that this morning because the host was not displaying its IP address. Something funky is going on with the network. Which can have, could be also affecting IVGA Pro. So um, that's why I'm not throwing any of these guys under the bus because I know our network is in the process of being upgraded. So... Um, uh, I, th I think it's just due to f some some consumer grade uh, network switching and stuff that's going on, and weird DHCP business where multiple uh, multiple routers are trying to assign IP addresses. I think that might be behind some of this stuff. Um, the other thing was IVGA Pro um, lag. So when the person doing slides hits next on the slide. Um, there's usually like a quarter second delay, which is typical for over the network input, which we're trying to move away from, but more on that later. Um, 2.8 second lag. It, so, so it was getting a 2.8, so almost a three second lag. So when the verse is changing to chorus and the person up there hits the next button to switch to the next set of slide, the next slide or set of lyrics, they're, like everybody's confused because it doesn't happen fast enough. So that that 2.8 second lag was happening. We clocked it with a stopwatch. Um, man, that was happening intermittently. It, would, it was fine. It was the lag was non-existent for the 8 a.m. service and the 10:45 for 75 percent of the service. It was this awful lag, and then the lag went away, and then it came back again. So uh, typically, it's just you know 0.25 second lag, which is acceptable or typical, I should say. Yeah, that was definitely uh, an issue. Uh, and another Tascam record error. So in my last report, I reported um, a Tascam record error. And it was a one-time thing. I'd never seen it before. It just happened again. So at 65 minutes into the, um, into the service, the Tascam uh, stopped recording. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that, but as we... Uh, drive on this Sunday afternoon together I will get into some more of the details here so the first thing so IVGA kept losing signal um, this is one of those odd things where um, our network is not entirely up to uh, up to par right so um, about six months ago our whole network was all the data coming into the main church building was coming over uh, two Category 3 cables that had were essentially phone lines that had been repurposed for Ethernet or for data. And um, that was leading to all kinds of super slow upload-download speeds. The network really, it was it barely functioned. Like, you could, you could get onto the internet, but it was so incredibly slow because they, we didn't even have Cat 5e. Uh, infrastructure that it was hard to get anything done. Even downloading like a Windows service pack was was a challenge. So what we've done is we've installed fiber and we've installed Cat6. So we've got good infrastructure now, which was step one. Step two is to upgrade the um, 
the actual switches and routers on either end and to make sure our, you know, our network topology is up to snuff. And that is something that is a little bit above my head and I'm fine with admitting that. I'm not a network guy, I'm not an IT guy, I'm an audio video guy. And of course I know how to terminate Cat 5e and all that, but I'm not exactly one that is uh, experienced in specking what type of switches you know we should have. I have a pretty good idea. I could probably make some, do some research and, and figure it out. But we've we've uh, we've been in um, talks with consultants about exactly what equipment we should buy to to get our networking up to stuff. And really, this, what I'm mentioning with the IVGA network input lagging and slowing down and software audio console like losing sync to the remote control laptop I, I truly believe a lot of these issues will disappear once we get our network backbone uh, in place or rather the backbones there the the cabling is there to, to support these higher speeds and, and more traffic and VLANs and all that business but um, we don't have the end devices, so the, the, the routers and the switches have not been upgraded. So we've essentially got like home uh, or consumer level, you know, routers that you just have in like, uh, you know, a residence. And we've got maybe multiple of those kind of all hooked up together over time and band-aids placed upon band-aids. So that's kind of what we're dealing with there, but we'll get there. We'll get it fixed up. Um, the other thing, I just wanted to make note too, we are using, um, uh, to do Pro Presenter with IVGA, we are using Windows 7 Ultimate Service Pack 1. We're using IVGA Pro version 1.0.0.41. And we're using Pro Presenter 5.2.6.3 on a PC. So uh, th this is, this is the, the software side of things. Where, um, that those are the build numbers or the version numbers of the software where when we're experiencing this lag from IVGA Pro um, and we're going into a TriCaster and really I don't want to throw any of those software builds or the TriCaster under the bus or anything that's not what this video is about I really think once our network gets repaired uh, we will be doing a lot better but in the meantime to avoid having to use the network input to the TriCaster we have ordered a black magic design uh, DVI to SDI converter box and I think that is that will help us get from our pro presenter which is being which is software presentation software being run on a PC uh, I think that'll help us come out of that PC through DVI convert the DVI to SDI and bring the SDI into the TriCaster I think we'll be at a happy point once we get that working. We've heard reports that that's a good way to get um, from Pro Presenter into a TriCaster. Uh, and here, this is this is the the rub. When you start doing this um, prosumer, when you're in this prosumer market where we've got some broadcast equipment, but a lot of like consumer equipment, and we're using some places we're using SDI, and other places we're using DVI and HDMI, like it. It's really this gray area where not everything is as plug and play as you would think it should be, or, or not everything is as plug and play as you'd like. So it's been a little bit of a painful process. We would have just gone straight for uh, SDI output cards, video output cards on the ProPresenter computer, except for the fact that the cheapest SDI output card we could find for a computer was like broadcast quality, and it was way too expensive, right? So, you know, I hate getting converter boxes when you can avoid, when you can just get the signal right the first time, but this is one of those things where it's like the difference between like a $400 converter box or like a $2,000, you know, video card. So that was, that's kind of the rub there with that. Now the floor monitor being broken. I was told by the musicians that it's broken. Speakers don't typically just break. Usually you do something to the amplifier and you fry the amplifier and then the speaker breaks and the magical blue smoke comes out and you can't get it back in the box, right? That's that's the, the running joke there. Don't let the smoke out. So the amplifiers are all working fine, so nobody messed up any of those. 
speaker not working, I am willing to bet it's either a cable, a quarter inch uh, cable has broken, or the internal quarter inch jack built into the, uh, the passive speaker there. I think that's probably what's broken, so that just needs to be repaired. I'm not too, too worried about that, but it's kind of alarming when you come in and everyone's just like, hey, the speaker's broken. It is? Speakers don't just break. What did you, what happened? And nobody, nobody knew. They're just like, oh, no, it's broke. So, anyway, that's probably that. Uh, let's see, what else should I cover here? I think I touched on pretty much everything here. I touched on the delay already. That was really weird. How many times it dropped out. So, I will conclude uh, this edition of the Volunteer Tech Vlog. This has been a live sound and video report for March 22nd, 2015. And I will post um, some short little clips, uh, video clips I took uh, during rehearsal uh, yesterday. And if I can, I want to get the sound that, that uh, the, the, uh, the in-ear monitor uh, was making when it when the batteries failed because it made an obnoxious sound. See you in the next video.